Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Making Something From Nothing. Uh, today's going to be a project video, no thrills, going to be no editing, uh, no annotations on the screen. I have a project and I might need y'all's help, I'm not sure. I picked up this really nice keyless all brick chuck and it has a straight shank on it. And I didn't have anything to remove this Jacobs taper. So I went ahead and bought uh, the number one set and the number two set, knowing I'd need them down the road. I picked up this nice uh, Morse Taper 2 to Jacobs 2 Arbor that I'm going to put in there so I can use it in the lathe. But I have to get this out first. The problem is, let me show you, the number one set doesn't fit and I knew it wouldn't that's why I have the number two set well the problem with the number two set is it's too big so I need to put a bigger shoulder in this I'm gonna come up with a a different way of doing it I don't know if it's gonna work and if it doesn't work uh, I'm gonna ask for y'all's help so stick around and wish me luck now this shank is about two and five eighths inches. So what my plan is, is I'm gonna take some uh, thick walled pipe that I have and I'm gonna cut me a piece about an inch and a half. So let's go do that and we'll come back. So I have the pipe over here in the bandsaw and this is a new bandsaw to me and maybe y'all could help me out. Uh, the stickers were missing off it. There's no identifying marks or names embossed in the uh, casting but what it does have is this logo in the corner so if anybody can identify that logo and tell me what uh, the manufacturer is for this uh, bandsaw I'd appreciate it now I'm not sure if you need oil with uh, these bandsaws but I'm sure it doesn't hurt So I'll flip it around, do that to the other side. Alright, so I've got both sides cleaned up. I just need these two sides parallel to each other. Now let's go see if we can get that arbor off of that chuck. So what my plan is, is I'm going to go ahead and slip this over the existing arbor. I'm going to go ahead and mount this in the chuck of the lathe up against the jaws. So this way this can't back up. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the wedges. Now that I created myself a, a bigger shoulder, something those wedges can actually grab on to and force the chuck off that way. At least that's the plan. We'll see how good it works. Okay, so this pipe is up against the chuck jaws, so it can't go any further that way. I'm going to put the wedges in this little gap I created Let's see if I could zoom in on that. So the only thing that can move is the chuck going that way. So let's give it a shot. Well, I don't know how good that camera angle is, but it's as good as it's going to get. But I wanted you to see what's going on here. So these wedges are going against each other and effectively creating a bigger gap here and there's nothing that should move except for this chuck popping off. Now 
and them suckers are tight and that's created a nice size gap. I don't know why this chuck is not coming off. These uh, Starrett tap handles are pretty nice. I like it. So now I'm over here at the vise and I've got my wedges in. And here we got our bolt getting blocked by two parts of the vise. Hopefully it's enough lip to go ahead and hold that flange on that bolt and keep that shaft from pulling up. So we'll give that a shot. And the flange slipped off that little lip, just like I thought it was going to do. So I put a washer on that flange, and then I had to jack everything up with a couple of washers on top of the vise there that you see. Just to get my location and have uh, the right amount of room for the wedges. So it's turning out to be quite the ordeal here. Let's see what happens. All right, well, here goes nothing. Yes! Sweet! Well, there we go, folks. After a lot of trouble. <laughs>